day 17. I'm just passing Bilindrangar or Sukar. This seems to be the center. And I have just now passed 200 mile milestone. Feeling good. Um, feet could be better, but all good. I am just leaving Surgetna. As you can see, the road here is tarmacked and it only becomes tarmacked as you leave the city. In the center, it's all dust. Uh, it, it, the dust comes up into the air as it's because there's a lot of traffic there. And it's really, really dusty. It's difficult to kind of keep your eyes open and breathe normally there. It's not too much of a worry because there's very, very few cities that I'm going to be going through. It's all rural, where there's nice and clean air. Uh, there's lots of stalls either side of the road and the people are constantly like beating the t-shirts and what have you to get the dust off them to make them look uh, appealing to buyers. Uh, yesterday, uh, quite loud as well. Yesterday in the hotel, just one thing I thought I'd mention, I had uh, a little desk fan in there so I was able to wash all my stuff and normally one night worth in the hotel isn't enough for it to drive. But uh, I set up a little washing line, pointed the fan at it and everything dried up completely. So I've got all, all fresh stuff. If I do camp today, I know I don't need to do any washing. Everything's clean. Uh, this, we are in the very, this very long jungle forest. There is a very dangerous jungle, but my friend don't scare and live in the under jungle. Basically, we met, I'm just going along this road here to the next village and I met this guy, he's, he's in a little bit of trouble. He's here on his own. Uh, he doesn't have any water. It's 15 kilometers back to where he's going. His friends left him here, he hasn't got any money. So I've given him at least enough money to get a bit of transport back to the village. And he seems quite genuine and friendly. Yes. <laughs> Just stopped off at this little pit stop. I guess it's the equivalent of a service station because it's on one of the main routes. This is the bridge. I think the river is called something like Berry. B B H Perry Berry. Uh, I'm about 16k into today, so about halfway. I wasn't sure if I was going to camp or get to the next place because I thought I would be really tired. But as it goes, I feel the most fresh I felt for quite a while. I just stopped off at a little kind of rest stop place. I don't know what to call them. It's just a little shop on the side of a road or path or whatever. Here is actually quite a big road, uh, but you get them everywhere. Just a couple of tables, uh, you can get a drink, that kind of thing. I don't think they do food, maybe you can buy snacks. Noticing in this area, uh, communism, like hammer and sickle uh, markings here and there, on people's doors, on boulders, that kind of thing. So on, on the subject of uh, hammer and sickle, the guy who owned the shop, basically looked exactly like a Ukrainian Cossack, which is like a bald head with hair at the back with a little ponytail and a big handlebar moustache. Haven't seen anyone remotely look like that here, but uh, he just, <laughs> he really did look like, uh, even in Ukraine, you don't really get people like that anymore. It's kind of like a historical thing, but he just looked like exactly like that. It's difficult to, judge situations sometimes with the language barrier um, and some, sometimes I have no idea if someone's being nice or the opposite. Uh, so I was having a drink, I had a Fanta and he was kind of saying rupee rupee go 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 that kind of thing so I just thought okay that's a bit strange maybe he just wants me to pay and go maybe they're waiting for me so I kind of got my wallet out and then someone else said no no no, no he's paying for you your drink so, okay, totally the opposite. Totally the opposite of what I thought. Um, he kind of, it's, it's really strange. Like during all that time, he didn't sing, uh, he didn't at any moment have a smile on his face. But he was being polite and being nice. And he got me a drink. And I kind of explained what I was doing. Maybe he just liked that. And uh, after that, it was all namastes and uh, hands together and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I kind of have to, uh, you know, as a cliche, cliche goes, I have to hope for the best, but assume the worst here because I have to think about my safety. And if there's a situation that seems like it might not be great, I'd rather just kind of make my excuses and leave and, uh, and crack on just in case, because you never know. 
I, I, I obviously am putting myself in a quite a vulnerable position. I'm on my own. Um, I've got all my equipment with me, with me that I need. So if that gets taken, then uh, things can get a little bit tricky, uh, but not impossible. Um, but anyway, yeah, nice experience. Just a quick little note to say that basically I'm really enjoying today. It's uh, felt very comfortable. I am 24 kilometers in and the hotel is at 33. Uh, so I've got nine to go, um, but so far at 24K, it's felt like the easiest day of the whole trip. Uh, hopefully I'm, I'm not speaking too soon and maybe at mile, uh, at kilometer 32, I'm going to be uh, regretting saying that, but it feels quite comfortable. I guess maybe maybe it's the blister starting to recover, my feet feeling a little bit better again, uh, or maybe it's something else. Basically, before this trip, I wasn't sure whether the whole thing was going to get progressively more and more difficult, or um, because it's such a long distance, uh, long term endurance event, that maybe in a way, like the first few weeks is actually going to train me up and if I get plenty of rest and recovery that I will get stronger as the time goes on. I think the reality will be uh, that it's going to be a bit of both. I get stronger in some ways but there will be cumulative fatigue in others. Um, obviously if, if this was going to be just more and more difficult every single day, which it, it kind of was until the last couple of days, a uh, little up and down but generally kind of a downward trajectory in terms of energy. Uh, if if the trip was going to be like that for the whole thing, then you know <laughs> I'm only two weeks in, so by the end, uh, you know, towards kind of two months, it was going to be really difficult. But I'm really glad that these last two days have felt a lot easier. Um, that kind of gives me a lot of hope for the coming weeks. Hopefully, I'm gonna. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna let this settle for a little while. I'm not gonna push the miles up too much. I'm gonna see how it feels over the next couple of days. Hopefully, this isn't a fluke. Uh, I've been concentrating on my recovery a bit more. I've basically been. Uh, I noticed that 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 massive bottle of Mountain Dew that someone got me a couple of days ago. I had a really good day after that. So I think maybe I was just dehydrated. I drank all of that with all the sugar and all of that in there. You know, norm, normally in the UK, not great, but here. I just need calories, um, lots of electrolytes in there. And also that day I, I raised my legs quite high up, like I was kind of lying on the bed with my legs up the, the wall to um, get rid of all of the swelling, all the liquid that kind of builds up over the day. And I really felt it, I, I literally felt it drain out of my feet. Um, so hopefully that, that kind of helped as well. So I'm just gonna carry on doing that. I'm not sure which one of those things works. Um, I've been experimenting a little bit in the last couple of days, but whatever I'm doing, it seems to be working so far because I do feel a lot better. Quick little message about uh, having a good day today. Um, I just feel very positive today. I, I notice I'm saying hello to a lot more people. I'm smiling. Uh, I'm not just nodding. I'm doing proper kind of namaste with a bow and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, it, it's easy to say, Oh, or if you just stay positive, or if you um, if you are positive, then you will have a good day, and the rest of it will be easy. Um, but I just I'm not sure which which way around it is. You know, maybe um, I, uh, positivity does seem to breed positivity. And the same is true with negativity, breeding negativity. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know which one which one is first. You know what I mean? Um, maybe a bit of both. Maybe I'm just. Uh, Maybe I had some good recovery uh, and it felt a little bit easier, which raised my spirits and then I'm a bit more positive and it made the rest of the day easier. Probably a bit of a combination of both. <laughs> Uh, the name of this village or town is Chinchu. Chinchu, and I get a really good vibe. Everyone I've met, kind of just heading into town, uh, and I got myself another <laughs> bottle of Mountain Dew because it really, it really helped with recovery. Um, uh, so I got, I got the bottle in a shop, and I'm speaking to people. Every, I'm getting a really friendly vibe from everyone here. The hotel is really cool, really quirky. Um, I'll show you around quickly. There's a kind of shower 
toilet, uh, basin all together. Uh, now the quirky thing about this is, I'll just come out of the room a second. It's kind of like, feels like a bit of a prison <laughs> in a good way. You can see the, these here, they go down to the bottom floors. Probably isn't coming out very well on video, but you can see right down to the ground floor. And on the outside of my room here, are these kind of bars. It's almost like the rooms were built kind of where the balconies were or something. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe the building was something else before it was a hotel. I'll try to find out. But uh, I've got a fan, I've got power, Wi-Fi, loads of 3G in this little village. I haven't had internet for a while now. Um, but suddenly there's this little town with, when I was coming in, I noticed loads of telephone antennas. So it's got it all. Great. I'm happy.